rebellion causes us to run away from God. But repentance says, you know, I'm coming to my senses. So I will get up and go back to my father. This is one of the things I love about the son is that a lot of people would take this kind of guy and say, you know what, he's worthless, he's good for nothing, he's ruined everything in his life, he deserves what he gets, and write him off. A lot of us would write off a person like that. As I keep getting older, the, the more and more merciful I get towards people. And it's because I look at this story and I think, if a guy like this who will insult his father and indulge his sinful living will repent, then maybe repentance is possible for other people. And so we see that this young man went and he repented. And he had this mind. He acknowledged. He had the ability and the confidence to confess, you know, I sinned against my father. I sinned against God. I sinned against heaven. Do you know why a lot of people don't repent? It's because they're too cowardly to confess that they did anything wrong. That's right. A lot of us like to be victims, you know? It's their fault, it's his fault, it's my parents' fault, it's my wife's fault, it's my kid's fault. No, no it's my fault. And that's the thing. It takes courage to be humble. It takes courage to confess your sins. It takes courage to say, you know what, life was better with God. And it takes courage to get up and go back to Him. <clears throat> I don't know what you're, you are in your walk with Christ. I don't know if you're indulging sin, if you need to repent. But have the courage to repent. Have the courage to say, you know what, repentance is actually a gift because it means I'm living my life the way that God wants me to live. It re and, and instead of running away from God because of sin, I'm running to Him because of repentance. That is a great message for all of us. You know, some of you have experienced repentance. Some of you have come back to Christ in His church. And to tell you the truth, there have been, those have been some of the most exciting moments of my life. And because I wanted to celebrate with God and His angels. And some of the best moments was seeing some of you come to Christ and I baptize you in the Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And right there, I knew that right as you were coming out of the waters, all of heaven was cheering and praising God. And there, I'm there just hugging you and cheering you on and saying, yes, God saved another one. But it all, that, that moment all comes about when you have the courage to say, I've sinned against God and I want to go back to Him. And so this next part of repentance actually leads to the next stage in a spiritual walk with Him and that's the forgiveness of the Son. Read with me in the second part of verse 20 to verse 21. It says, But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. You see, this is one of the great images of God. A lot of times when we pray, God, Jesus taught us to call God Father. And this is part of the part where we can actually hear a parable of Jesus being, being taught and we can see this imagery of saying, no, he's just like this loving father that when I repent of my sins and I acknowledge my sinfulness and I choose him over sin, that I go to him, I can see this guy running towards me and embracing me, loving me, hugging me, kissing me. Remember how I mentioned if my daughter or my son went and they just abandoned me? How when they came back and they, I saw them again, I would run and embrace them? And I think about this is what the father did. He had to have known his son repented because it would have taken courage to actually return to the father you dishonored. And he ran to the man. And here's the thing. People in that day who were wealthy and were noblemen, they did not run. It was undignified for a nobleman to run. But he ran. Maybe to stop his son from running and turning the other way. Maybe to show his love. Maybe just because he was so excited. Maybe all those things. But it shows that he embraced and loved him. In the same way, that's what God does for us. A lot of times people often ask the question, can God forgive me? Will God forgive me? The answer is yes. And in fact, he will run towards you. The Bible makes known that if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. 
And here's the thing. God is so eager to forgive you of every sinful thing that you have ever done that he will run towards you. He's not there sitting at the driveway with his arms folded, tapping his toes, saying, yep, showed you. He was there. He's like the one who saw, sees you at the stop sign down there. And he's like, is that my son? And he just runs. And he embraces you. This is one of the things that I want you to understand. If, this, if God is likened to this father and he's willing to forgive this son who offended him and squandered every blessing that the father gave him, then God is willing to forgive you as well. He was willing to forgive Peter, who when Peter met Jesus said, get away from me, I'm a sinful man. He was willing to forgive Paul, who Paul admitted and said, I'm the chief of sinners. You see, a lot of times we need to accept that embrace. When God hugs you back with forgiveness, are you willing to accept that hug back and allow him to forgive you? It's not easy sometimes to allow people to forgive you. But that's one of the things that God wants us to do. God is eager to forgive you. God is eager to wash your sins away. God has already proven he would do whatever it took to save you from your sins. And he did that when he sent Jesus Christ. And I think, you know what? This is where we can start realizing hope. If we're struggling with depression, if we're struggling with a an anxiety of no peace, if we're struggling every day where we don't feel any hope and we have a hard time waking up in the morning, then remember this moment and remember and get this imagery of God embracing you and saying, I love you so much, I forgive you of everything you've ever done. We're together again. And so we see this forgiveness. Can you imagine how shocked you'd be if you were the son? Be having this whole speech written out. He had a speech written. He, he had it written, and then when he saw his father, he gave the speech. But here he is giving a speech, and his dad is just hugging on him. He's like, oh, what is this? It, would, it wouldn't have been necessary the response he would have expected. He expected to be a slave. He didn't expect to be hugged. But that's exactly how God forgives. Completely and totally. The Bible says that love keeps no record of wrongs. And so when God forgives, he keeps no record of wrongs. That's how perfect he is in forgiveness. That's an extension of how much he loves you. But then we see that this leads to a next transition in his spiritual life. And that is the celebration of the son. Read with me in verse 22 and 24. It says, But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let, let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Look here. He called for his servants. And instead of making the servant, his son a servant, he actually honors him. And bringing the best robe, a giving a robe to someone is a sign of honor and acceptance. Just like Jacob gave a robe to his son Joseph, it was a symbol of honor. It said that he put his ring on his finger. Just like how Pharaoh gave the ring to Joseph, it was a symbol of power and authority and a position. It says that he put sandals on his feet. In that day, slaves wore no shoes. So putting on sandals on his feet shows you're not going to be a slave. You're going to be my son. And it says that he killed a fattened calf. That was the fattest of animals. It was the one that you saved for a special sacrifice or a special celebration. And when his son came home, he said, I want the fattest piece of meat killed. And we're all going to have steak tonight, boys. Because my son is back. A reason to celebrate is that what was lost was found. And it said they began to celebrate. This is where we say, see that God doesn't forgive out of compulsion. He doesn't give out of necessity. He doesn't give just because he's like, oh, I just want peace. Okay, I forgive you. It says that he celebrates. You want God to celebrate? Come to him and allow him to forgive you. This is one of the greatest things. This is why and I think heaven's going to be the greatest thing. We're all going to be in heaven and we're going to be praying.